Like a stove. Like my costume? It's for my lesson on the armor of God. The Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. <laughs> Just like old Scratch over there. The Bible tells us to put on the full armor of God. <laughs> Not armor like this old bucket of nuts and bolts but spiritual armor that will keep us safe from the devil's attacks. Armor that is essential for our Christian life. <laughs> oh, we wish we had some of that armor, Luther. I wish we had a Doberman. We all know that wearing the proper equipment in sports is essential, don't we? Imagine a tennis player trying to stand against an NFL defensive line. Imagine a skydiver who forgets to wear just one vital piece of equipment. Imagine a pole vaulter forgetting his pole. <laughs> oh, these are silly examples from sports, but battling the enemy of our souls is no game, especially if we're not wearing the full armor of God. What is the full armor of God, you ask? Let's take a look. When the Apostle Paul was a prisoner in Rome, he wrote a letter to the church at Ephesus. In the letter, he described how blessed Christians are because of what Christ had done for them, and encouraged them to continue in their faith and to live holy lives. He wrote that there is a fierce battle that Christians would have to fight. The battle would not be fought against people, but against spiritual forces of wickedness. Paul wrote that Christians should put on the full armor of God in order to stand victorious in this battle. He probably got the idea of armor from watching the Roman soldiers guarding him. The first piece of armor was a wide leather belt. The belt is the foundation piece of the soldier's armor. Paul called this the belt of truth. 
Jesus is that truth. He is the only way to God, and without him, there would be no hope. He is the cornerstone of our salvation, the very foundation of our Christian faith. The next piece of armor was the breastplate. It is fitted into and secured by the belt and protected the soldier's vital organs. Paul called it the breastplate of righteousness because the believer is completely protected in Christ's righteousness from all accusations of the devil. The Roman army was known to cover great distances over rugged terrain. This was because its soldiers wore boots that protected their ankles and feet. And because of their boots, they were able to stand firm against the enemy. Paul wrote that Christians should be prepared as they take the gospel of peace into the whole world, regardless of obstacles. The devil would try to stop them, but with firm footing, they would be able to stand against his schemes and attacks. The Roman shield was large enough to cover a soldier's body. It was made of panels of wood that were glued together and covered with hide. Before going into battle, the soldier would soak his shield in water so that it would extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. Paul wrote that the shield was like our faith in Christ. Our faith will protect us from all of the flaming darts the enemy shoots at us. The helmet was a symbol of Roman authority and protected the soldier from harm. To the mind of Paul, the Roman helmet was a symbol of the Christian salvation. The Christian trusts that God will protect and preserve him no matter how fierce the battle rages. Our salvation is guaranteed because of God's faithfulness and nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. The Roman sword was short, designed for one-on-one -on -one combat. It is the one piece of armor that can be used defensively as well as offensively. Paul called it the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus quoted the Bible when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness and the devil could not stand against him. Finally, Paul wrote that Christians should pray for one another. It is prayer that keeps the Christian in constant communication with God, who protects us and keeps us through every trial and temptation. You see, the Apostle Paul understood the devil's schemes very well. He also knew that in order to stand against any spiritual attack, we must be fully clothed in the armor of God. If we are careless or doubtful, the devil will knock us off our feet. I don't think old Scratch will bother us for a while. Hey, Belfry? <laughs> yeah, he got conked by the shield of faith. <laughs> Uh-oh. We better shove off before we get the belt of truth. <gasps> I think I need a can opener. Old Scratch won't be able to eat us now, will he, Luther? I think he'll be too busy laughing at us. Mm -hmm.